Good evening, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Film, with your host, Andre Salazar, me, film writer, director, and aficionado. Um, you know, I only get about 20 to 40 views on these Art of Film episodes out of, what is there, like, Five billion people on Earth. So, not very many, we'll say. <laughs> but I don't do this for you, partially. I do this for me. And maybe there'll be a record in the annals of time and the internet, and one could go back and look at all the episodes of film and kind of uncover my thoughts and feelings and analysis of these films. And one might wonder, why in the hell is he talking about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls? To which I say, I don't know myself. <laughs> um, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, satirical comedy musical, 1970, Russ Meyer, and written by uh, Ebert, Roger Ebert, believe it or not. So the film critic. Uh, he took a couple weeks off of his work at the Chicago Tribune and wrote this film. And uh, this, I believe, is his only writing credit. It is a Russ Meyer film. It's got that cheesecake. In fact, I've never seen this film before. I just saw it just now. It's on Criterion Collection. And um, I'd always just kind of dismissed it. 60s cheesecake. Eh. You know, I got other things to watch. I'd rather watch like Taxi Driver and French Connection and those kind of things. Uh, but for some reason, I thought, you know what? Tonight, we're going to watch Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Originally, this was going to be a straight sequel. So there was a movie that did very well uh, before this one called Valley of the Dolls. And this was going to be a straight sequel. And um, I'm not sure what happened, but basically they decided, no, screw it. We're going to... We're doing a sequel, but we're going to do a send-up of it. We're doing a satire of the the ideas of Hollywood, the ideas of, you know, these young kids coming and being uh, thrown in this kind of madcap, insane environment, which is Hollywood in the 60s. Um, and having never seen this movie, but familiar with a lot of pop culture stuff, you see now where all this is coming from. Austin Powers, you know, Scooby-Doo, you know, Josie and the Pussycats, um, even stuff like um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, all these things, you can see the lineage from this film. Like, this was a cult classic. This made a lot of money. Uh, it made, I think, $9 million, which is a lot back then. It cost, like, I think it was 900000 so a lot of money it made, huge. Uh, there is a lot of cheesecake. The actresses are beautiful. There are there's a lot of beauty, you know, physical beauty in this film. But we're gonna put that on the side. We're gonna table that because that's fine. We can we can find that in different places. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about this film because I think it actually is kind of a fun film to see from the storytelling perspective. Um, one of the things that stuck out right away was the editing. The way the film is shot. The quick cutbacks. The the rapid dialogue. And the dialogue is witty. The dialogue has, has a nice cadence. It, it kind of moves, um, which, which is a lot of fun, actually. And, you know, one of the characters, Z-Man, spoilers, or Z-Woman, um, which is a really weird twist at the end. Uh, Z-Man does have this kind of Shakespearean speaking. Uh, there is on you know double entendres and things like that. Uh, there's there, there is a wit a, a wittiness and a cleverness to the dialogue, and I appreciated that. Um, and some of the angles were interesting. The camera. Now a lot of the cameras is to accentuate you know T and A. Um, but that's, that beside the point, still the composition, things like that. I really, I could appreciate. I thought it was kind of cool. I liked some of that neat kind of like really crazy Dutch angles, really, um, 
extreme, extreme kind of angles and things like that. I really like that a lot. Um, the story itself, by the way, dolls is a reference to downers kind of drugs. And it is that kind of classic tale of, you know, out of towners coming in, being seduced by drugs and sex and alcohol and fame and all that stuff. It's, it's the, the young kids coming from the boondocks with a little, little band. They make it big by this uh, producer character. It's kind of lavish, crazy. He's kind of like a pre-David Bowie, it seems like, a little bit. Uh, and evidently, he was patterned after the real producer, Phil Spector, which there's been some documentaries. I need to learn about him. I might watch some documentaries on Phil Spector since I'm kind of really into the music world right now. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought it was, I thought it was cool to kind of see where Austin Powers and these other like films kind of pulled from. So it's kind of neat to see the origins. Uh, the story is campy and silly and comedic and sometimes it goes a little crazy, but I thought it was fun to watch. Similar to Barbarella. I think this, in fact, right around the same time, right? I think Barbarella was 69 or 68. I think it was before this, but um, and it was Italian. I mean, it, it's very different, but it does have that kind of campy '60s kind of film film look and shot. I like it. I actually think that's fun. So I put this up there with that. Um, I don't know if I'd watch it again. I would with other people. If people want to watch, it, I'd watch it again. It's not like something like, I gotta go watch this film. Um, but I liked it. I thought it. I thought. It, there's a lot of clever dialogue, things like that. The plot itself was pretty mundane uh, and pedestrian, but um, the beautiful actresses, beautiful actors. Um, it was a fun film. So there you go. Quick, quick review. There's not much we can talk about it, really. Um, it made a lot of money. It did really well. It's fun. It's kind of campy, silly, uh, schlocky, I guess you would say. I mean, it's not like a Richard Corbin film. It's not that bad, um, but you know today's standards. You know, if you're under 35, you might not appreciate it as much. That's all I'm saying. But go see it. I think young kids can see stuff like that. I got a friend of mine who's 27, and I'm always trying to get him to see like Kurosawa, Kubrick. You know, the stuff that like has some meat on the bones. Um, so go for it. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Why don't you comment? Let me know what you think. What'd you think of that movie? And what's your favorite Russ Meyer film? All that kind of stuff. Let me know and talk to you later. Bye.